apply a style. We put in media queries in our full page, even though you shouldn't be getting to that page unless you're on a desktop browser. If you're on a mobile browser, you should be redirected. We put code in there just in case you got there and you're on a mobile browser. So there's a lot of these sort of redundancies and, and catches and fail-safes that we put in our code just to do our best to handle every situation. Yeah, it, as far as PHP goes, absolutely. You could put a bunch of include files to do that. You know, you could, for example, for the, for this particular example, you know, you could put not the yellow part, but you could put the HTML five uh, or HTML yeah five shiv and the style to make the Firefox treat those earlier versions of the Firefox, treat it correctly. You could put that in include file and just pop that in the head. Or would you use like a DOM element or something? Or I think it's called a DOM retrieve element, element name, with find element by ID. For right. what? To style them, like the header and, you know, article footer. No. You can't do that? You don't need to do that. You don't? Oh, okay. No. For, uh, again, uh, I'm not sure what point you walked in, but Firefox and Internet Explorer have two different strategies for handling tags that they don't know. Yeah. All right. Firefox, even if it doesn't know the tag, if you define if that tag's in there and you you apply a style to it, it applies a style. It says, "Hey, I don't know what a header is, but you said you want headers to be yellow, so I'll make it yellow." But if you're like actually writing something, you want to cover all the possible ground you can. When, when Oh well, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. You would take and you'd include this style and this script. This script does effectively what you said. This script is for Internet Explorer that if it doesn't know about a tag, it won't style it. All right. This actually goes through the DOM and goes and adds all those tags to something that Internet Explorer recognizes. So then that will allow us to put those in. So right. This code, if we looked at it, um, it does the actual thing. But you're absolutely right. We would put that in an include file um, so we could include that in every page. Then who knows, you know, if uh, at some point newer browsers come out with additional features and there's some catches or whatever, you could just add it to that include file and all your pages would get it. All righty. So, that was the one big thing to note, the new structural tags in HTML5, along with sort of the backwards compatibility issue. Almost anything that we deal with with uh, HTML5, um, for, for now, anyhow, we have to be concerned with what happens if their browser can't handle it, because support for HTML5 is not universal. Um, at this point. So we, we kind of have to have a, sort of a fallback plan of, okay, and that, that was one example of, of stuff that we put in as a fallback. Andrew, what, did, what was something important that you noted um, through this? What are some of the things that you found as the most interesting, or however you want to put it, that you posted? Um. Well, the, the first one, the attachment one, was a website I came across where you could um, add your own um, own things into um, a mobile device. Okay. And then it gave you the code for that. And um, there was a few things we haven't talked about yet, so I put um, a bunch of interesting things together and then got the code for that. And mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's open this up. Explorer, eh? Let's 
try opening it in Firefox. Let's try it in. Yeah. All right. Care to talk about? Yeah, sure. The interesting things. The um, the the home is um, is fixed, and okay. you click on that. And if you were obviously does not, they're not attached to anything. Mm -hmm. I just downloaded. The Code. Right. But um, that took you back to the home website. Okay. And then um, the login and password. Mm -hmm. um, you could type stuff in, and again, it's not going to actually send anything correctly, mm -hmm. but I thought those were cool. We haven't gone over those. W what part of that did you think was cool? Uh, the fact that, um, that they're like, um, they're beveled. Okay. And um, it it definitely shows you that you can type inside of it, mm -hmm. and okay. the fact of it, um, it could be able to send it. Okay. Cool. The little, uh, you mean the little like border when it yeah. has focus? Yeah. Okay, and how is that accomplished? Um, CSS. Okay. Remember, some of the things you get in the framework you get for free, right? It just comes automatically based on the data role or anything like that. But you can always apply your own style if you um, are not getting what, what you want. So let's go and let's put this paragraph in our code to maybe see the collapsible a little bit better. So 
So you could have these sections, if they're collapsible, you could click on it and expand it. This might be something nifty, like for, even for like for an FAQ page, right? You could have each one of those as collapsible that you know when you when you know the the header would show the question. If you clicked on it, it would show the answer. All right? How did that work? How did we get that to work? We define it with the data role. And with the data role, you have a heading, and then you have other stuff. And if it's collapsed, you just see the heading. If it's expanded, you see the other stuff as well. And you can initialize it to either be collapsed or, or not. All right. So you can you can say the, uh, the the initial state. Do you want it to show, then they can collapse it, shown, then they can collapse it, or do you want it collapsed and they can show it if they click on it? Notice again, this is accomplished through the data role. All right, the data role is collapsible here. That's what really is the tip off to the jQuery mobile that you want to handle this special. All right, and that's what we've seen throughout it. The first example that we did right at the beginning of the class is we looked at a list of all of these data roles. So go through that list and, and pick them out. And even if you don't memorize all of them, and what all of them do, have an awareness of what's out there. So in case at some point you do need that, you know, you can refer to it and get the details of how it works. All right. Um, it's real difficult to remember all this stuff, right? New HTML5 tags, CSS stuff, PHP stuff, jQuery mobile stuff, you know. If you can remember all that off the top of your head, you know, more power to you. For most people, if you have a sense of what the capabilities are, you can always go and look up specific functionality and specific uh, exactly what you need to do to implement some of that functionality. All right, let's see. What's this guy? Oh, that's a slider. We've seen an example of that. And I, I thought it was cool you could just throw in a map pretty easily of, of uh, wherever you live. I okay. put it to... Um, it's a map of uh, the college, basically. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Excellent. Um, let's see. The other thing that you included is you included the, the I think, same link um, Joey posted which is wow they, they give us three bonus features this, this used to be 25 right now it's 28 um, HTML5 techniques to know new doc type I finally have the doc type memorized this is the first doc type I've ever remembered the figure element and so on down the line and um, I put the numbers that I thought were applicable for the okay. assignment. Okay. Excellent. Do you want me to read those off to you? Or? No, that's okay. Here's an example an email input. And when you submit it, it will tell you, you know, it'll do validation. However, what is this? Fallback. This time we can't depend on browser validation. The server client solution must still be implemented. So you don't get away from not doing client or server side validation just because HTML5 has this capability in it. All right. David, what did you find?
support that, but I guess we'll find that out. dialogue but it's not doing animation probably because of the browser that we're running. Do we have Chrome on this? I found that in issue 2 with those transitions. Re repeat that please. I found that in issue 2 when I was testing the transitions. Uh -huh. It wouldn't work really but I, I, didn't, I don't think I got it to work at all on the desktop. Only okay. The mobile. Only the mobile? Okay. The mobile Let, let's try the emulator. Let's we'll see if that does the same good. Okay. Well, you know what? That's what we have a lab for. All right, you can try some of these things in there, and um, and, and test the transitions uh, if you want to. But that's interesting. I have noticed uh, in the example I have, I didn't put, I didn't code any transition, so uh, it just sort of did the slide off to the side by default. Um, but yeah, you can. Uh, you know, experiment with that. That, that looks like a cool thing uh, that, that you could uh, you could use. One thing I will say is, like anything along those lines, is that um, a little of that can go a long way. You know, you don't you don't want to um, befuddle the user too much. All right, there's a couple things I want to go over. I want to go over. I found a great cheat sheet for jQuery Mobile. And I found something good about HTML5 forms, and then I want to talk about themes and creating themes uh, with jQuery. So let's go and look at that. jQuery mobile cheat sheet. And being foolishly optimistic, uh, I looked and I thought, you know, how wonderful it is that this is something that this fellow who apparently lives in, Tai uh, lives in Taiwan, if you go to his about page, where did I find, I think I went to his Twitter to see that because I was not able to read uh, any of that. Uh, but this person put together really uh, a, a, an extremely effective cheat sheet. And, and I like how it's coded. Some of these we've seen before, but if you want, for example, let's just pick something, horizontal radio buttons. You know what? This, I don't think this is a page of EV1 and IE. So we will open up Firefox and try to view it there. this code, paste it in our example, and There's our horizontal radio buttons. Pretty slick. He did go from option one to option three. I had to do a double take on that to make sure there wasn't some sort of browser bug or something that was keeping number two from showing. But 
those are actually radio buttons, but they're styled in such a way uh, to look like that. That was that was the one example uh, in here that I was like, wow, you know, I wouldn't have thought that that would that would be possible. Um, let's look at some of his other, uh, well, and again, they're not his things, but let's look at some of the uh, other things that he points out. List views, we've seen that. A dialogue, and your example kind of contained a dialogue as well, in addition to the, the, that. A dialogue is like an alert box that pops up, and it's called a modal window because you, you can't do something until you've addressed that. You can't do anything behind it, but you can do that. Toolbars we've seen, navigation. Um, and so on. How to use a third party icon. Layout, they talk about having columns. I thought this was cool. Even though I'm not really big on columns on a mobile layout, you can go in and put them in. You know, they have three columns, block A, block B, B, and block C. Now, they ultimately smoosh into each other here? Or? Well, they don't go below a certain amount, but that's a pretty minimal size. Um, one thing I've noticed in doing some of this is, is I, I, I might be sort of changing my attitude a little bit. Um, I've seen desktop sites developed with this that do look pretty good, actually. So, you know, using the, the multi, multiple column might be more of something you do on a desktop site than on a, a mobile site. But, again, you can do both in, in jQuery Mobile. I think a lot of the rest of the stuff we've already talked about. I do want to touch base on making forms fabulous with HTML5. Not just good, making them fabulous. fabulous. And new input types. And we can we can just play around and put one in for date. I realize this is sort of a hodgepodge. styling it or if there's no support for this. When I did this at home on Google Chrome, it did pop up a little calendar when you click on it. All right. Um, let's try this in the mobile emulator. sort of a happy accident. What happened when 
Firefox didn't support that. What did I get instead? Did I get an error? Did anything blow up? No. What did I get? Just got a display text box. A plain old text box. All right. The default, if you in fact, if, if you omit the text attribute, the type attribute on an input element, it's a text box. If you spell it wrong, it's a text box. All right. So if you think about this in terms of fallback and graceful degradation and all that, if you use one of those elements and the browser doesn't support it, it acts like it's a text box. That's not bad, is it? I mean, that's, that's a good thing, as, as Martha Stewart would say. Right? So some of the other things like email, telephone, and all that, if we use those, if we use those uh, input types, and the browser doesn't support them, we're in the text box. We don't get the validation and all that. We have to write our own validation, but at least it doesn't break. All right. What I want to do with the remainder of time today is talk about themes and, and styling uh, with, with jQuery mobile. And there's a nice... I closed the angel. Links, but we can Google them. There's a nice little theme roller, they call it, that allows you to easily create easily create themes. No, this is part of jQuery Mobile. This is this is yeah from the just jQuery Mobile site and and uh, yeah no it's, it's not not third party it's just associated with that. What you can do is you can create up to twenty six they call them swatches. All right, and you can think about the best way to do this. The one way that I saw a person do it is they made each swatch be one color. So A might be the light blues. B might be, in this case, if you notice, swatch A is gray. Actually, all of them start out like this. Let's move over to swatch B, and let's make this our red swatch. So I will make the text red. All right. And I'll make the background yellow. So my swatch B is yellow background red text. And I can do that for all these things. I can make links. red and texts yellow. Okay, maybe not a good example. Buttons, normal, pressed, and all that. The point is I can do this for up to 26 swatches, A through Z. Alright? This last, I'll just do one more, and I'll just, again, I'll just do the header on this one. Yeah, sure. So now we have three swatches defined. We have our A, which is the default. We didn't touch that one. We have our B that I only changed some of the elements on, and C which I only changed some of the elements. But you could go in and style all of these. You know, you could style any of them to look a certain way. You could style the buttons when they're pressed and all that. But I'm just going to do the header text just in the interest of time. So now, all right, you're ready to roll, all right? So what you can do is you can click.